When the lights come down in Austin, Texas, for who's number one championships, all eyes will be on the surging women's strawweight division. With talent emerging from every corner of the world, today's strawweight division has never been more competitive or exciting. From silent assassins to Brazilian phenoms, these eight girls are all worthy challengers, and any one of them has the skills to claim victory. But as always, only one will be worthy enough to call themselves the Who's Number One Champion. David Nassau is coming out of there, it is. It's a the future of women's grappling starts on September 25th when we start writing the story of the next generation of elite grapplers. This is the road to who's number one championships. He starts to run to turtle. I take the big step and look at my head. It dies. Again, I got the seatbelt. If you could do body triangle, that's great. But most important is head position. All right, guys, any questions on this? While still young in her black belt career, the experienced and submission savvy, Danielle Kelly has already amassed a large following of supporters. Her deadly leg locks have already earned her high praise on the Who's Number One stage. My name is Danielle Kelly. I am a black belt under Silver Fox BJ in Sauerbrook, New Jersey. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for about 14, almost 15 years. This year will be, uh, this November will be 15 years. Originally when I got into jiu-jitsu, I was getting bullied a lot and I didn't have any confidence and I needed to learn how to defend myself. My parents at the time took me to a dojo. My coach introduced me to jiu-jitsu. And then uh, I did my first tournament that year, and I won. And ever since, I just love competing. Jiu-jitsu definitely uh, helped me with my confidence a lot. I probably like had like three fights in my life where I really had to defend myself. And I won all of them, so I'm like 3-0 oh in street fighting. <laughs> My experience uh, overall competing for who's number one was a really good experience. It was really cool that women's jiu-jitsu is getting like the attention and I feel like it's bringing a lot of eyes and it's going to make the sport more popular, especially for women. Thank you. Nice work. I'll see some of you guys later in the week. My first match at who's number one with Jessa, a lot of people were expecting a lot from me and then the match happened, and I felt like I didn't know how to do jiu-jitsu. Tight heel hook, look attempt here from Jessica Khan. She's got the heel. But look at this, straight on bar, arm. straight on bar. It is unanimous, all three judges for the red, Jessica Khan. I was mad, yeah, I was really mad. I didn't play my game. I felt like I kind of played her game. And I knew what she was gonna do. And it's like when you're there and your mind's not doing what your body's telling you, it's, it's heartbreaking. Going to the Jesse Crane match, I had a lot to prove to myself. Six ranks, and yet she is entering this match as the underdog. We did the Who's Number One interview before me and Crane's match. I even said that I would submit her in under five minutes. And here I end up walking out with the fastest submission, and I got it in three minutes. I felt really good. I felt like I played my game plan, and that's what it comes out to with these tournaments. You know, who plays their game? It brought me back confidence, put me back on my feet. I feel like I proved myself already that I belong with these girls. If there is a clear number one in the field, it has to be Mike Sabastos. The Brazilian phenom has recently started pulling away from the pack and attempting to establish herself as the world's best. My first time when I came here was 2016. My life in New York, pretty much training. I feel like I have a good friend. I feel like everybody's nice to me. Everybody tries to help like each other. Everybody trains harder, so it's good. At Unity, it's hard work by good people, so it's, that's it. Like everybody trains harder and like a lot of good people. Huh? I thought you brought this one first. 
I'm my Sebastian, a black belt under Julio Cesar, and I represent Jeff Chin and Unity Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I like compete because I can challenge myself, I can improve my Jiu Jitsu. But if I, I'm, I'm just focused on the fight, I don't care about anyone. I mean, I think it's nice to be the number one because. I can see that I can be the number one, that my jiu-jitsu is good. Yeah, I can make my jiu-jitsu like, work for whatever rule is. So in the past, like before, we didn't have a lot of attention, but now people are getting excited and people are starting to like the small division, so I think it's nice. It's the first time I compete for a big prize like this. It's hard not to think about the money, but I'm trying more focus on myself, my improvement, and how I'm gonna fight. And she takes it, the black belt world champion, the first black belt world champion, 2019. This lady right here, Misa Bastos, in her first year as a black belt. With Gi and No Gi World titles already under her belt, she has dove into the deep end of submission-only grappling. Winning in September would prove that Mesa can dominate in just about any rule set you put in front of her. They can expect that I'm going to do my best to win. If I can win, that means that my jiu-jitsu is doing good, but I'm training like hard to be the best version that I can until there and then I think I will be prepared when the times come. Art of Jiu Jitsu's Jessica Khan has been a mainstay in the strawweight division. Known for her relentless submission attacks, the Mendez Brothers trained black belt has already racked up multiple impressive victories at who's number one. My name is Jessica Khan. I am a black belt under the Mendez Brothers at Art of Jiu Jitsu. I would describe my jiu-jitsu style as very aggressive, but also technical at the same time. People hear the word aggressive, they think like, oh, like sloppy and just like going hard. But like, while I'm fighting like hard and aggressive, I try to use like good techniques at the same time. I feel like I really get into the zone when it's like a super fight, like all the lights, all the fans, like everyone cheering and just like, when you walk onto the mat, it's just only you and that opponent. And then like, you guys are just trying to put on a good show and then like, also, you know, you're trying to win, trying to do like what you do best. It all comes together for these big moments like that. So in the rankings, Khan, number four, Kelly, number seven, a significant match here. Who's number one? That Danielle fight. I thought my performance was really good. You know, the whole time I kept attacking and like, she like rarely got any attacks. She was mostly defending, which she had a good defense. Perhaps a toe hold is her favorite position here. But yeah, I was a little upset. I couldn't get the finish, but like I literally tried like every submission and I couldn't get it. But I'm glad like I was able to push the pace for 15 minutes and like keep attacking. It is unanimous, Jessica. After I won that Danielle fight, Patty kept complaining about how she was ranked number three. And then after I won that fight with Danielle, I got ranked number three. And then she just kept complaining about like, how she should have that spot because she beat me. So I was down to fight her, but she kept saying no. And then finally she said yes. Before that match, like I already told myself like that I didn't want the match to go the full 15 minutes. Like I already knew in my heart that I could tap her before that. This is a, an, an opportunity for her to get something back against uh, an established name in the sport. So it didn't matter like what submission, as long as I got the tap. It's what I wanted to do. In and now the arm is coming out, and there it is. Hips up, arm bar, finish for Jessica Khan. Makes me very happy, you know, like this is what I've been working for, and like eventually, like I want to get to that number one spot fast. And your winner, Jessica Khan! I know most of the girls, and I fought most of them. Um, one that does excite me is Tammy Musumeki. I think it'd be a cool experience to go against her because, like, she's been a black belt for a few years. She's won like a lot of major competitions, so it'd be a nice challenge for me. But it's, it's exciting to hear that she's doing it. Long known for her gi prowess, the world champion grappler turned lawyer is returning to her no gi roots. 
Tammy Musumeci may be focused on her new career, but that doesn't mean she isn't eager to get back on the mats. Tammy Musumeci takes it 6-2 to win the gold. Tammy is the most accomplished grappler in the field. She has competed and won against the best, and now she's looking to do it all again, this time against a new generation of challengers. Okay, my name is Tammy Musumichi. I guess I'm under Boop's Garage too. Um, I'm a black belt. All right, so for people out there who aren't familiar with your grappling style, how would you describe it? Um, I guess I... <laughs> I mean, I would consider it a knockoff version of Mikey's. I actually think the Who's Number One events are really awesome because you're not just trying to get advantages. You actually have to be thinking in your mind. Am I the one pushing forward? Am I the one being more aggressive? I really think it's a really good format and I'm really excited to do it. I haven't really been following that many people recently. I mean, I've known some of the names because, I mean, some of them I'm friends with, some of them I've trained with. The thing that's motivating me the most is that I just want to really put on a show and do the best I can and just see the progress I've been doing. I've been training a long time and if I've won a competition but I didn't hit like cool moves or anything, I'm not really excited. So, I mean, I always like going for the submission and doing the best I can to get the submission or at least do something really cool. <laughs> and I haven't really been watching the girls compete as much. I trained with Jessica Khan a few years ago. She's really good. I watched her at one of these events in Vegas against the Maya's Bastos. It was really good too. I saw her at Worlds and I've seen her compete through the circuit. I fought Danielle Kelly before, but she looks pretty good. And then Grace Gundrum, she was like doing the no-gi stuff before, you know, all of us are doing the gi stuff, so. I haven't seen many of her matches, honestly. To be honest, I don't think I've ever seen her match, but I've heard her name before and she seemed pretty cool. Perhaps the most intriguing entrant is 10th Planet Silent Assassin, Grace Gundrum. Her quiet demeanor and brutal limb-breaking mechanics have earned Grace a loyal following. But make no mistake, she is one of the most lethal submission artists in the game. I'm Grace Guntram. I represent uh, 10th Planet Bethlehem, or Finishers. I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and I'm 19 years old. I would describe my jitsu as, I guess, uh, pretty passive. Like, I don't like to be too aggressive, just because usually if I'm, like, too aggressive, it's a lot easier to make mistakes, and being passive, you know, gives you more time to think. Oh my God, having Grace as a student is like probably every instructor's dream come true. Um, she comes in and literally does everything you ask her. If I was like Grace, I needed to take this pole and pole vault through a stick of fire, it will help, she would do it. Now you got, you know, people like this, I like just sitting down, just going right here. <clears throat> just one, that's all we're doing. Okay, I'll be around and help you with it. And then we'll give an OT. Can I switch to the other The gouge of the eyes, that's a good one. Grace, she just, She's just one of those people who just show up. And I've met a few people that are definitely like that, where, you know, they just, they don't say anything. They just come in and they just do the work and they never complain. That's another thing about Grace. Not only does she never complain, but she'll never say she's tired. She'll never tell you she's injured. So it's like kind of like a Rubik's Cube almost sometimes trying to figure out, you know, exactly what, uh, what she's up to and what she's thinking, you know. Uh, we're at, you know, uh, Finishers HQ, I guess is what they call it. This is the lobby right now. Uh, so we got a bunch of like, you know, medals and belts from everyone who's competed um, in this case, and then over in that case, and up on the windowsill, and then some more up on that windowsill too. Uh, so this is my uh, fight to win belt that I got from my match with Patty Fontes. Uh, I was, uh, got a submission with, um, I believe, a dead orchard. Uh, that's a design I think someone from Dazu Sara drew. But yeah, I think that was one of the first t-shirt designs of me that they have. But yeah, that's about as much as I know about it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like exactly my style, um, but it does look good. Maybe if you hold this in your left hand. Oh, yeah, there you uh, go. Yeah. And then 
Like it's just one fist here. Right there. Identical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> My experience at Who's Number One has always been like really great. You know, each match I've had has been like against a really tough opponent. Match with Misa, there was a lot of back and forth where it's like I was on top and then she swept me and then I was on my back and it just kept flipping back and forth. And there is a, uh, a sweep to top from Misa Bastos. I did need to be more aggressive in that match. Letting her in too much uh, kind of was against me for that one. Will she get the last second pass here? She's got less than 10 seconds to work here. Getting up to, the, to her knees Done. and out is Gundrum. Well, that is... The end of the match is unanimous for the red. Misa Bastos, the winner. There was a little bit of relief that I lost just because, like, I had technically a winning streak the whole time. So, like, you know, I didn't have to keep that up anymore. Um, but once that was done, it was just thinking of, like, trying to figure out, like, what I should have done. Uh, when I was invited back to Who's Number One, I felt just glad that I was able to be back and, you know, have another go at it. Grace Gundrum now looking to fight them onto her side to put Alex Wing down. Match with Alex, I didn't know, like, exactly what to expect. In those last few seconds, I was able to get the submission from the back triangle, I guess. Oh, you can see the grimace. Armlock, though, armlock, armlock. There's the There's the finish. Grace Gundrum with 18 seconds left. Right now, I'm ranked number two, so to be invited to the bracket, there's a chance that I can possibly become number one if I'm able to get to the finals and uh, face off against Misa. She is number one, so yeah, I'd say she's a tough this match. I would assume that she'd make it to the finals. This 115 pound racket's a stacked division. You know, every competitor has done really well up till this point. It's probably the biggest prize that I've ever competed for, so that's huge. To become the Who's Number One Champion, it would mean a lot, you know, representing Bethlehem and like everyone at the school and just the planet in general. It would be, you know, really cool to do. Who's Number One will crown its first ever strawweight champion come September. All the money, all the stakes, and all the glory are on the line. You can't just go into this event and just stool or anything. It's not going to work. A lot of these girls are going to bring action. I'll have to prove to myself that I can do well in this tournament. I think I will be prepared. Everyone's going to fight their hardest to win. And I think every fight will be very exciting. To win here means writing your name in the history books forever. So who will get it done and walk away champion? Tune in to Flow Grappling on September 25th to find out.